Hello and welcome to Learning Redstone Part 5. In this part I want to talk to you about pistons, sticky pistons, slime blocks and honey blocks. Man, that's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Okay, let's start with a very basic piston. So the piston is a block that can, when powered, extend and by that it can push out another block and it can push up to 12 blocks. So when we then try to push more blocks than the 12, it just won't work. So the push limit for each piston is 12 blocks. The other piston, the sticky piston, works almost the same. Except when it gets powered, it still pushes out the block, but when it retracts, it sticks to the block and drags it back to the place where it comes from. So by that we can move a block back and forth. When we put on a power source on the piston like this lever directly to the piston or sticky piston, in that case it doesn't matter, it will pop up since the piston tries to extend and will destroy the lever or for instance a button would also pop off. The only exception for this is when we put it on the back side. This will work without the input getting destroyed. So this is working, while this isn't. Even though this is not working, it still has little use for us. So when we now flick this lever, we know the piston will extend and retract because it pops off the lever. But look what happens to the block. It just get pushed away but not retracted. And if we do it again, it gets retracted. So we can use this with our good old friend, the observer. The observer, as I told you in the last episode, gives out one redstone tick. This leads to this weird behavior of the sticky piston just throwing out of the block instead of pushing it out and getting it back. So this way we can control a sticky piston if we want it to push the block away and drag it back or just push it out and with the next signal to drag it back. This is very handy for very many redstone contraptions. But there are also blocks that can't be moved by a piston, for instance obsidian. When we flick the lever, even if there is a single block of obsidian, it can't be moved. Pistons just can't do it. And there is actually a variety of blocks that the piston can't push. This isn't even the whole list. I would uh, recommend to check the wiki for this. But this is some of the blocks that are mostly used for blocking a piston from pushing. I'd say the most common are obsidian, crying obsidian and the furnace. But these would also work for blocking a piston from that it can push out or drag back. Again, best case, check out the wiki. There is everything you need if there is a special block you want to use and want to check if it can block a piston. Also, this varies between Bedrock and Java edition. Okay, it is time for the weird part of the video, so let's go. Um, as you remember, when we use a lever, the adjacent blocks get powered. So I flick this uh, top lever and only this lamp turns on and this lever only turns on this lamp. So far, so good. But when I now push this lever, both pistons get activated. Why is that? So there is a thing called QC or quasi-connectivity. I get that this is very weird and we have to talk about it. So let's say I flick this lever up top here. Nothing happens. But when I now add a block, this piston extends. And now I could even turn off the lever and the piston stays extended. He has no reason. He's no reason, there's no power source. 
But this is quasi-connectivity. This piston just doesn't know that it is not powered. It just gets it as soon as it gets an update in an adjacent block. So when I remove or put a block to it, the piston sees, oh, I'm not actually powered, I have to retract. This is why this lower piston is also extending and the top piston does as well. But in this case, the lower piston gets it because the upper piston gives a block update because it gets powered directly. So this piston knows, oh, I have to retract now. All of this is caused by the fact that a piston is by the code actually a door. Mojang used the program code from a door to convert it to a piston. And that is why the piston has the hitbox of actually two blocks. So quasi-connectivity is powering the block diagonal below. I hope anyone has understand that. <laughs> it is very interesting and weird. Okay, so much for the pistons. Now let's head over to the slime blocks and the honey blocks. Basically, they both behave the same. The only exception is that the um, slime block is a full block and the honey block is not. It's a transparent block. So we can send a signal through the slime block, but we can't send a signal through the honey block. In the next showcases, you could also swap the slime blocks I used with um, the honey blocks. It doesn't matter, they both actually are pretty much the same. So slime and honey blocks are basically the glue of Minecraft. If you put them next to another block and you push them by a piston, all blocks get moved. So you could say all these blocks are sticking to the slime, but that is not completely correct because only the blocks adjacent to the slime block or honey block will stick to it. We can see this when we use a sticky piston. All the blocks get pushed out because this stone block is adjacent to the slime block and pushes these blocks with him. But when we now retract, only the stone block next to the slime block comes with him. So these are not connected to the slime. That's why these blocks stay there while this stone block comes with the slime block. This also works for bigger contraptions, like this. You can have multiple slime blocks or honey blocks and add solid blocks or any other block basically to it. That way we can use, use it to move bigger block rows basically um, with one piston. Next. There is the slime blocks and the honey blocks are the same as I said, they also stick to another. So honey to honey and slime to slime. But slime does not stick to honey and honey does not stick to slime. So we can use those to separate the blocks we want to extend or not extend. If you want to push a honey block or a slime block and the adjacent blocks should not move with them, you can use one of these blocks. So that are basically all the leaf blocks, all glazed terracotta, pumpkins, as well as carved pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns, and also the immovable blocks I just showed over there. So these three blocks simply just won't stick to the blocks. And the immovable blocks just can't be moved. So with that, you could use this to move this block, but not the adjacent blocks if you use any of these blocks or their variants. Okay, that should be everything for now. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two and I also hope I didn't confuse you too much with the quasi connectivity over there. I would be really happy if you give this video a like and maybe even consider subscribing. Until next time, bye bye!